Hi everyone, it's Tamsin here from Babbling Books and today I'm really excited to share with you my favorite books and the reason why I love his work so much and that is the works of Haruki Murakami, one of my all-time favorite authors. Um, as you can see from my pile, I own quite a few of his books. I've read seven or eight um, different stories written by him and I've enjoyed all of them. So what I want to do in this video is share with you some of the best books I think to start. He is a very prolific author and a, almost all of his works have been translated into English. So a common question that I get is where should I start? Which book should I start reading first? Um, and which one's going to be a great read for me and a great introduction to Murakami. So we're going to talk about that. Um, I also want to share with you my other favorite novels of his that I really enjoy. So Murakami is probably one of the best known Japanese authors. When it comes to his writing style, I'm always surprised and perhaps a little bit baffled that his writing is so popular. Um, his writing style is very strange. He deals in what you could best be described as magical realism. So one of the reasons that um, I suggest Norwegian Wood, which is his most famous novel, at least in the English speaking world, um, as a starting point for any reader of um, Murakami's work is because it contains the least or not really any fantastical elements to it. It's really just a love story about two young adults um, coming together and, and falling in love quite tragically. Um, and it's just beautiful and sad and serene and sometimes a little bit surreal. And it's just a really touching exploration of the way that we relate to one another. And it just has these beautiful passages where you're really imagining the landscape in which it's set. And um, I, I read this while I was traveling in Japan, um, traveling through the snow and through the pine forests and things that are mentioned in this book. And it just really resonated with me in that way. Um, there's also a really beautiful movie um, adaptation of it, which is um, quite good. Um, and I think it's quite faithful to the book. So. Um, um, I recommend that you, you check that out too if you're interested in this. But I think that Norwegian Wood is a great place to start if you'd like to read Murakami's work. So if we're sliding up the weird and wonderful scale from Norwegian Wood, the next book which I would recommend that you read or if you want to try out some of the fantastical elements before you try Norwegian Wood is the colorless Tsukuru Tazaki and his years of pilgrimage. Um, I read this book very recently and it kind of brought back all of the things that I love about um, Murakami's work. It's quite a short read. It's um, not particularly long, but I think it's a really great exploration of his work. It carries a lot of the typical elements of his style, um, including a lonely, disaffected kind of protagonist who's floating along in life and um, doesn't have strong social connections and feels like there's something lacking and missing from his world. Um, and then he goes and sort of sets about in a very unplanned and uh, almost nonsensical kind of way to, to find some meaning in his life, which is a strong theme that flows through all of Murakami's work. Um, I really enjoyed this. It's a great story of friendship and the weird and wonderful things that we can do for the, the people that we care about and the isolating um, nature of miscommunication. So I really enjoyed this book. I think that um, it's really engaging read and uh, not too weird and wonderful but it is just a little bit of that Murakami flavor. Next up on the weird scale, we have the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. So I actually have two copies of this. Uh, this is my favorite cover because it's extra pretty. Um, the Wind Up Bird Chronicle was actually the second Murakami novel I read after Norwegian Wood. Um, it, I still have fond memories of it. It's not my favorite of his, um, but I think that it's quite a nice exploration of suburban life. Again, it includes a sort of disaffected, um, drifting male protagonist um, who's living this very mundane suburban life. And um, then his cat goes missing. And cats are also a theme throughout lots of Murakami's books. The symbolism of them and their physical presence in his books 
um, is they're in pretty much all of them. Um, and he starts receiving these very strange and increasingly explicit phone calls. Um, he meets this random selection of strangers, each with a story to tell, and he starts to reconnect with the world and reconnect with himself throughout the book. So it's a strange book, um, definitely, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I think perhaps I enjoyed some of his other work more, but it's one that um, might be a good introduction if you're interested in weird and wonderful adventures. And if you like the soothing monotony of the suburban world broken up by something a little bit out of the ordinary. And right up there at the top of the weird and wonderful scale has to be Kafka on the Shore. Now, I read this very recently and this book is weird. Um, there are fish that fall from the sky, there are talking cats, there is some kind of weird time travel thing going on. Um, the plot is not really that clear for most of the book, but there is something kind of wonderful about it. There are some disturbing scenes of rather graphic violence, um, which is a little bit different to the rest of his books and I found quite confronting. There were a couple of pages that I sort of had to skim and then close the book. So this book is not gonna be for everyone, but it is a really interesting um, example of his work. I think it again explores those themes of, of loneliness, of isolation, of dissatisfaction and disconnection from the world and that is um, quite a powerful narrative um, again male protagonist um, again with the theme of cats um, and the theme of random strangers providing kind of prophetic advice um, and I think this is a it's a great book I enjoyed it more than the wind-up bird chronicle uh, but again there's some elements in it that I didn't love and I think that might be off-putting for some people so it's um, yeah it's an interesting one and if that sounds like something that you might enjoy then I think that it could be a great one for you.